we could have our next tropical depression on our hands as early as the early part of next week. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about that area of interest, that tropical wave we've been highlighting for the past few days. Development chances continue to grow on that. We're going to give you the latest. I'm going to show you the latest modeling on that as well. As of early on July 28th on Friday, the Hurricane Center also highlighting two areas not expecting those areas to develop, but certainly going to be impactful for the areas that they are impacting. So we're going to break those down. I'm going to show you where those are as well. And then, of course, we still have a few days left of that Saharan dust lingering along the North Gulf Coast and the West Gulf Coast, especially as that continues to kind of dissipate out here. It'll last for a few more days. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we venture through hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you find this content helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Alrighty, guys. So temperatures, again, been blazing hot in the Caribbean. The water temperatures have been off the charts, of course. And that is helping to fuel this little system that we have rolling on through the Atlantic right now. This is our system that we've been showing you that's been way out near Africa. Now it's made its way into the central Atlantic. Development chances, again, as expected, continue to go up. Now a 60% shot for development here as designated by the National Hurricane Center, this big blob here. Note that this continues to curve a little bit. We showed you this, that in all likelihood, this would miss the Northeast Caribbean, and there is even higher potential for that to happen. I'm going to show you the models in just one second, but in this orange area, that's going to be the best opportunity for this tropical wave to become our next tropical depression, potentially getting a name as we get forward into the upcoming week. We are going to be watching this closely for Bermuda, but even so, it does look like it's going to curve. X marks the spot into the Western Atlantic and Western Caribbean. This is kind of uh, telling the story, at least getting to the end of the story before I get there, but we're going to look at both of these areas here. Again, both in the Western Caribbean towards Central America and right off the southeast corner of the U.S. Both of those not expected to develop, but heavy rain is coming. I'm going to show you that in just one second. Back to the models. Again, the low-level spin. Y'all know what we're looking for. I talk about this all the time. We're looking for a consolidated ball of red. I'm going to show you the euro continues to fall in line with the GFS as it typically does at this stage where it is ge geographically speaking anyway in the Atlantic watch what happens and again this is great great news you see it does have it stronger than it has in previous runs and again we thought that it might get stronger than what the euro was advertising but again that's okay because the stronger it is the better opportunity it has to feel the weather features here and get flung back out to sea we love that. So there's the Northeast Caribbean. Here is Bermuda. Here is our potential next tropical depression as it gets into the Central Atlantic. And then it gets flung out. Here is our trough that we've been highlighting, that dip in the jet stream out here. And then here is our big Bermuda Azores high. And the two of those going to help to get this thing up and out of here before it dissipates to whatever it becomes in the cooler waters of the extreme North Atlantic. I want to show you the GFS again. And this one has been right on the money for its entire life so far. Still, again, that, that strung out disturbance as we showed you here. Again, for this to become tropical or to consolidate and to start strengthening, it really needs to be by itself. And still embedded in the intertropical convergence zone here, it needs to kind of dislodge itself. And finally, it does do that according to both the Euro and the GFS. There's July 31st, 7 o'clock in the morning. And you see it there. There's that ball of red there. So we're increasing our low-level spin. It's becoming a little more well-organized by this point. Still going up and out, missing Bermuda, missing the Northeast Caribbean, and then riding that Bermuda Azores high right on out into the North Atlantic again, leaving everything alone. The GFS, let me show you this, takes it into a really big storm. And this is a, this would be post-tropical, extra-tropical at this point, but that would be a really giant storm. So that's going to be something that we'll keep our eye on just for the fun of it. Again, this will be out into the Atlantic, although, again, early, early, early heads up maybe for Iceland. Again, as that thing kind of blasts through, we'll have to watch that for the UK as well. That's way down the line, like 10-ish days up to two weeks. Here is that next system that the Hurricane Center has highlighted. This was previously Invest 95L. It was rolling through the Eastern Caribbean, impacting the Leeward and Windward Islands. Now it's just a cluster of thunderstorms. Certainly it's the healthiest it's looked in a long time. Unfortunately, again, this is not going to develop. It's pretty much on land already. 
But you see the brighter purples here. Very intense thunderstorms crashing along shore in the parts of Honduras and Nicaragua. Again, the thunderstorms kind of falling apart at that last view there, but still some nasty, heavy rain, gusty winds. Even though this is not going to become a depression, this is not going to get a name, it is still imp impactful. So we talk about that all the time, especially for the Caribbean islands and especially where there's terrain. We get that really heavy rain and we get the mudslides, we get the flash flooding. So always need to be mindful when we have these things rolling through, even if they don't have a name. The second system that we've also been talking about, previously highlighted for possible development, it's been re-highlighted again, although given a 0% shot, and we know this, we've been talking about this, we've had our eyes on it for the last week. But nonetheless, you see that little spin there right off the corner of the Florida coast, right to the east of Jacksonville. The flare up here, the deeper moisture and the blues, yellows, and reds and purples that pop up there. That's the thunderstorm activity. You see that little curl, and I've been showing you kind of the spin in this. It's been weak. It's not been tight by any means. It's not going to become tropical. This also going to work its way on land. But just like the entity in the Caribbean, we are going to see the likelihood for heavy rain across the southeast corner of the U.S. want to jump back down into the Caribbean and talk about the rain. Again, I think some of these numbers are underdone along Central America. So again, Honduras, Nicaragua, heads up again for potential flooding and landslides. An additional two to three, maybe four inches of rain going to be coming in your direction. Again, this is also up for Belize. Just pay close attention and be mindful that the flash flood potential is there with this big cluster of thunderstorms that doesn't have a name. So again, just a heads up there that it doesn't need to have a name. It doesn't need to be a tropical whatever to cause some issues for you. So just uh, please be mindful of that. On to the Saharan dust. It's still hanging around. Brownsville, Corpus Christi, San Antonio. You see that bright or dark brown, I should say. That is where it's the thickest right now into the United States, where you see the lighter brown here as you follow my arrow. That's where we have it. It's not as prolific, though, so maybe some air quality issues in San Antonio through Corpus Christi, Brownsville, maybe into Galveston as well. Houston, we have the light amounts of dust around, same for New Orleans, and then right along the Big Bend panhandle of Florida. I mentioned earlier in the video that we were hanging on to this for a couple of days. Watch what happens. We get a little Thanos snap of that dust and we kind of dissipate it out of here we have a weather feature big high pressure developing here and that is going to help to churn things up in the atmosphere and kind of push it up away it does kind of get up towards like st louis and chicago even so that does kind of force it north but it gets it away from the north gulf coast a little bit as well so we're going to be doing okay and finally going to get that out of here if it has been messing with your allergies or it's been harder to breathe if you're sensitive to some particulate matter. Again, typically that dust is about 15 to 20,000 feet above your head. Sometimes when it's really thick, though, it gets closer to the surface and you can really see that haze in the sky. Maybe your car windshields have been dirty as well if it rains every now and then. Certainly likely seeing that towards Miami where the dust was really thick earlier in the week and now we've had rain induced by that tropical wave off of the Florida coast. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, if you want to hang out with us and talk about the weather, talk about the tropics, what's going on in your area, hit that subscribe button. Again, please, if you found this content helpful, it really does help us a lot. That little thumbs up, please do that for me. And again, if you hit that notification bell, you're going to be alerted to any time we post new content. We would love that if you keep tuning in as we track all things weather, especially the tropics, as we continue through hurricane season 2023. Thanks so much, guys. We'll catch you next time.